Okay, so let me introduce the simplest version of so-called Lucas tree models for asset pricing. Let's assume that time is discrete and horizon is infinite. So there is date 0, date 1, date 2, date 3, date 4, date 5, and the time continues forever. And there is some simple economic shock every period. At date 1, the economy can be up or down. And at date 2, again, the economy can go up or go down, can go up or go down. So the economy can be represented by this binomial tree. Ex ante, we don't know which path the economy will take in the future. The path can be, the realized path can be up, up, then down, up, or down, up, down, up, down, down, down. Any path can realize, but ex ante, we don't know which path will take place. Node is the combination of the date and the state. And the node is labeled by the partial sequence of economic shocks that have realized before reaching that particular node. For example, we call this node node U, this one node U U up up, this one node U U U, this one node D U, and so on. The economist's idea is that the consumption good at different dates in different states are regarded as different commodities. So we label consumption goods in the same way as nodes. So we say, okay, this potato or this tree, okay. When we say Lucas tree, we exemplify consumption goods as fruits, but I prefer potatoes, so I sometimes say fruits or potatoes. So this consumption good, this potato is called node U good or node U potato. This good is the node U D good. This good is node U D D good. Okay, and for consumers, they are all different. Consumption is denoted by C. So C0 is the amount of consumption good that the consumer eats at the initial date 0. Cu is the amount of consumption goods that the consumer eats if the economy is up at date 1, and so on. Let's denote probabilities by Q. So Q0 is the probability of this initial node being reached, which is of course 1 because we start with this node. QU and QD are the probabilities of these node U and node D are reached. QUU, QUD, QDU, and QDD, these four nodes at state 2 are reached with these probabilities. And QUU, QUUD, up to QDD. Okay, QU is 1, and QU plus QD is equal to 1. QUU is the probability that this particular node is reached. QUD is the probability of this node UD is reached. So if we sum them up, that is equal to the probability of this node U is reached. So that's equal to node uh, QU. And similarly, QU, Q, QDU plus QDD is equal to QD. Okay, basically if we sum up, well there are two on, only two possibilities for date 1. If we sum up these two probabilities, that's equal to 1. There are four possibilities, four possible states or scenarios for date 2. If we sum up these four probabilities, they sum up to 1. There are eight possible nodes at date 3, so there are 8 probabilities, they sum up to 1, there are 16 possible nodes at date 4, there are 16 probabilities for date 4, and they sum up to 1. Let's define utility. Let's assume that the consumer has the time-separable expected utility. So again, for consumers, 
these consumption goods are all different. So the consumer's utility preference, utility function depends on the entire consumption plan and it's time additive and expected utility. So it's some function u of date zero consumption plus time discount rate, let's say time discount factor, let's say beta is some number between 0 and 1 such as 0 0.99 times the expected utility from the date 1 consumption, remember QU and QD are the probabilities of these two nodes in at date 1 are reached and CU and CD are the amount of consumption goods at these two nodes respectively so this is the expected utility from the date one consumption plus time discount factor beta squared times the expected utility from the date two consumption remember there are four possible nodes four possible scenarios for date two plus beta cubed times the expected utility from the date three consumption plus beta to the power fourth times the expected utility from the date for consumption and so on. It continues forever. Now let's formulate the utility maximization of this consumer. For, co for the consumer, prices are given. The consumer is the price taker. So we are going to denote by P0 the price of this date zero consumption good. PU is the price of this consumption good PD, PUU, PUD, PDU, PDD are the prices of these consumption goods at state 2. And PUU, PUUD up to PDDD. Now make sure you understand what these prices actually are. By saying that the price of this node you good is PU, I don't mean that the price of this consumption good will be PU if the economy is up at date 1. Similarly, by saying that the price of this particular consumption good is PD, I don't mean that the price of this consumption good will be PD at date 1 if the economy is down. That's not what I mean. These prices are not future prices, these Ps are the current prices of future state contingent consumption goods. That is, today at date zero, consumers can trade these future state contingent goods. At date zero, they don't know which path the economy will take, but they can exchange, for example, this node U consumption goods and, for example, this node DU consumption goods. So it's like gambling or buying or selling insurances or lending and borrowing. And P's, PU, PD, PUU, these are the current prices, date zero prices of these future consumption goods. So today at date zero, when people trade these future consumption goods, these P's are the prices for that. Now the consumer maximizes his, his utility subject to the budget constraint and the budget constraint says the total expenditure is equal to total wealth and to the total wealth comes from the consumer's endowment so let's also define endowment we are going to denote endowment by y so y0 is the amount of date zero consumption goods the consumer has similarly y u y d we label everything in the same way. Again, economists' idea, so economists' clever idea is that, okay, the consumer doesn't know the economy, whether the economy will be up or down at date one, but the consumer precisely, consumer knows precisely what he will have in each state. He doesn't know the economy is up or down at date one, but he knows that if economy is up at date one, he will have 
YU units of consumption goods. That will be his income if economy is up at date 1. If economy is down at date 1, then he will have YD units of consumption goods. So he perfectly knows what he will have in each node. He just doesn't know which path, which state will realize in the future. Now that we have utility function and prices and endowment, we can formulate we can formulate the cons consumer's utility maximization problem. That is, so we already formulated, we already assumed this utility function. So objective function is that utility function, and we are going to maximize, the consumer maximizes this utility function by choosing the entire consumption plan subject to the budget constraint. The budget constraint says that the total expenditure is equal to his wealth, which is equal to the total value of his endowment. Apart from the fact that there are infinitely many types of consumption goods, the idea of the budget constraint, the idea of the total expenditure and the total wealth is the same as usual. He will consume, consume C0 units of date zero consumption goods. The price is P0. He will have C0 units of consumption goods. The price is PU. So basically you multiply the consumption amount and the corresponding price. Quantity times price, quantity times price, quantity times price, quantity price, quantity price, quantity price. And sum them up, and that's the total expenditure. Okay, remember all the prices are in units of date zero consumption goods. So the date zero good is the numerator, okay? So the, the P0 is normalized to one. Similarly, what's the total wealth the consumer has? He has Y0 units of consumption goods at date zero. The price is P0. He will have y zero, YU units of consumption goods if the economy is up at date 1. The price, current price is PU. So again, endowment amount, corresponding price, endowment amount, price, quantity price, quantity price, quantity price, quantity price, quantity times price. And you sum them up and that's, that, that's the total wealth. Once we formulate the consumer's utility maximization problem, then we can define the Lagrange function. So Lagrangian function is the entirety of the utility function plus the Lagrange multiplier lambda times the budget constraint. And because we are maximizing this with respect to the entire consumption plan, C0, CU, CD, CU, UC, UD, and so on, we differentiate the Lagrangian function with respect to each of the consumption amounts to get the first order conditions. For example, if we differentiate with respect to C0, the date zero consumption, we have U prime Y0 plus lambda times negative PU, and that should be equal to zero, and that gives us this first of the first order conditions. If we differentiate with respect to Cu, we have beta times Qu, probability Qu times U prime Cu, plus again lambda times negative Pu, and again that should be equal to zero, and that should give us this second equation. So the same thing can be said when we differentiate with respect to Cd. Uh, let's differentiate with respect to Cuu. If we differentiate with respect to CUU, we have, well, this part doesn't contain any CUU, and here you go, we have beta squared times probability QUU times U prime CUU. The rest doesn't have any CUU, plus lambda times negative PUU equal zero, and that's how we get this equation. Asterisk, star simply means the optimal consumption. It is the optimal consumption that satisfies these first order conditions. 
So basically, we have infinitely many, not just three, there are infinitely many equations in our first order condition. Now, let's derive the equilibrium prices in this economy. Remember, there are exogenous variables and endogenous variables in the economy. Endowment is given, probabilities are given, they are a part of environment. Prices are endogenous things, so we want to derive equilibrium prices. Now suppose all the consumers have the same UTT function. Everyone suppose everyone has this homothetic preference. And then, as I explained in one of the previous classes, we can justify the use of representative agent or representative consumer. If everyone has the same homothetic preference, whether we use the representative agent assumption or not, the resulting equilibrium prices will be the same. So let's assume the representative consumer, everyone has the same UTT function of this form, and if there is only one consumer, we know that the prices must be such that the optimal consumption plan of this representative consumer is exactly equal to what he has, what he is endowed with. So the representative agent assumption implies that consumption, optimal consumption, is equal to endowment. Okay, let's assume that our U function is our familiar power utility with parameter gamma, so that U prime C is simply equal to consumption amount C to the power minus gamma. Then, we can derive the equilibrium prices. First of all, so this first equation in the first order condition gives us lambda. So let's normalize the price of the data zero good, P0, to be 1. Then this first equation implies that lambda is equal to U prime, so C0 is equal to, so the representative agent assumption implies that C0 is equal to Y0, CU is equal to YU, CUU is equal to YUU. Okay, in the equilibrium, prices must be such that the optimal consumption choice is equal to endowment. So C is equal to Y, 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 and so on. And remember, this is the pure endowment economy. Pure exchange economy, there is no storage technology or no production technology. For example, there's no means, no way to convert this node you see you good, node you good into node you you good. You cannot convert this good to this good or from this good to this good. You cannot do that. There is no such technology. You cannot store goods. All the goods are perishable if you don't eat them, then they will, they will go bad. So, this first equation implies that lambda is equal to what u prime y0, and because we have this power utility function, we have lambda is equal to y0 to the power minus gamma, and once we have lambda, the other, equations in the, the other equations in the first order condition give us all the equilibrium prices, all P's, PU, PD, and so on. So this second equation gives us PU. So the second equation implies that PU is equal to beta times QU times U prime CU, which is equal to U prime YU, divided by lambda, and lambda is equal to, lambda is equal to, u prime y0, and that's what we have here, and because of this power utility function assumption, pu is equal to beta times probability qu times the endowment ratio yu over y0 to the power minus gamma. And similarly, this third equation gives us equilibrium price of the node u, u good, that is pu u is equal to beta squared QUU, probability QUU, times U prime YUU over U, lambda, U prime Y0, 
and we have this equation. Similarly, what is the price of node u d good? That should be equal to beta squared probability q u d times the endowment ratio y u d over y zero to the power minus gamma. And you know, if we differentiate this Lagrange function with respect to node u u d u d good, the first other condition we get is very similar. We will have beta to the power fifth times probability q u u d u d times u prime optimal consumption of the node u u d u d good minus lambda times the price of the node u u d u d good equal to zero and the consumption optimal consumption choice in the equilibrium is equal to its endowment y u u d u d so we will get the equilibrium price of the node u u d u d good should be equal to beta to the power of fifth times the probability q u u d u d times the endowment ratio node y u u d u d over y zero to the power minus gamma. Now we got all the equilibrium prices. In one of the previous classes, I explained the concept of the one period ahead state prices. All these prices, all these P's, P, U, P, D, they are all the prices seen from date zero. In other words, the numerator is the date zero good. If we divide P, U, U by P, U, by the law of relative prices, this ratio gives the price of the node u u good in units of node u good. So if you are already in this node, node u, then the price of one unit of node u u good is p u u over p u, and the price of the node u d good seen from this node. Okay, in units of the node u good is again by the law of relative prices, that should be equal to P U D over P U. So let's compute one period ahead state prices, because that will cancel out several things. Let's compute these two. So suppose you are now at date one and economy is up. Let's compute these two one period ahead state prices, PUU over PU and PUD over PU. PUU is here, PU is here, so you can see if you take the ratio, one beta is cancelled out and Y0 will be cancelled out. So we have PUU over PU is equal to beta times the probability ratio times the endowment ratio to the power minus gamma. And this part, probability, is actually equal to the conditional probability that the date 2 state is up given that the date 1 state is also up. Remember, the prob these Qs are the probabilities. QUU is the probability of reaching this node. QU is the probability of reaching this node. So if you take the ratio, that will be the conditional probability of re reaching node UU, conditional on reaching being in node U. And similarly, what's the one period ahead state, one period ahead state price PUD over PU? We have PUD here, PU here, so we can take the ratio, 1 beta is cancelled out, cancelled out, and Y0 is also cancelled out, so we have beta times the probability ratio, and this probability is now interpreted as the probability of the date to state being down 
given that the date one state is date one economy is up. Similarly, what is the one period ahead state price of this? Suppose this is at date 4, and the history so far is up, up, down, up. Up, up, down, up. Let's say you want to consume one unit of consumption good if the economy is down in the following state. What is the relative one period ahead state price for that? This ratio. And this is equal to beta times Q U U D U D over Q U U D U and then the endowment ratio Q U U D U D over Y U U D U to the power minus gamma. Okay, by the way, I, ex I forgot to explain the interpretation of gamma. So gamma is called relative risk aversion parameter. So in other words, 1 over gamma is the risk tolerance. So it's the inverse of the risk aversion. So it's, it's risk tolerance. Or there's another interpretation which is the intertemporal elasticity of substitution. Intertemporal elasticity of substitution. So 1 over gamma represents the substitutability across states and the substitutability across time. Now, let's assume some stationary environment. Now, what do I mean by stationary environment? It has two components. One is probability, and the other is endowment, because the exogenous environment of this economy consists of two things, endowment process and the probabilities. Suppose the probabilities are stationary in the sense that the probabilities are characterized by Markov matrix, a probability matrix. So suppose if the current economy is up, then in the following date, the economy is either up or down with the probability pi uu and pi ud respectively. It doesn't matter whether it is date 1 or date 5 or date 10 or date 100. As long as current state, current economy is up, then in the following date, the economy is up with the probability pi uu and the economy will be down with the probability pi ud. Similarly, if the current economy is down, it doesn't matter whether this is date 1 or date 5 or date 20 or date 100. The past history doesn't matter as long as the current state is down. In the following date, the economy will be up with probability pi du and the economy will be down again with probability pi dd. Suppose probabilities are characterized by this simple 2 by 2 matrix. Simple 2 by 2 matrix. Then this probability ratio is simply equal to, yeah, this is simply equal to pi uu. And this conditional probability is also simply equal to pi ud. And this probability is simply equal to, yeah, the current state is up. The next state is down, so this is equal to pi u d. So the probability ratios in the one period ahead state prices become very simple. And also, suppose the endowment process is also stationary in the sense that the endowment is always either up yu or yd. The past history doesn't matter as long as the current economy is up, then the endowment amount is yu. If the current state is D down, then the endowment amount is D. Imagine such a simple endowment process. Then this is simply equal to YU over YU, so that's simply 1. And this is equal to YD over YU, and this is equal to YD over 
value. Okay, the endowment amount takes only two possible values. In such a stationary environment, when P order head state prices become extremely simple, it is characterized by two by two matrix. If the current state is up, then one P order head state prices for the next data state up and down are given by beta times pi u u and beta times pi u d times y d over y u to the power minus gamma. Well, we have y u over y u to the power minus gamma here, but that is simply one. So let me not write it. And if the current state is d, then the one period ahead state prices are given by beta times pi, probability pi du times y u, y u over y d to the power minus gamma, and beta times pi d d, y d over y d to the power minus gamma, but this this part again is simply one. So let me not write it. Okay, so this will be the equilibrium one period one period ahead state prices in the equilibrium. And as I explained in one of the previous classes, as long as we have one period ahead state prices, let's note this matrix as Q. This is the matrix for, for one period ahead state prices, then Q squared gives the two period ahead state prices. Actually, let, let me denote by P because we use the Q for matrix uh, for probabilities. So P is the one period ahead state prices. P squared is the two period ahead state prices. P cubed is the three period ahead state prices. So you can compute as long as you know the one period ahead state prices, you can compute all state prices and if you know all state prices you can price any assets stocks or bonds or derivatives any assets in this environment we can easily extend generalize the environment suppose there are n possible states every period not just so far the date one state whether was either up or down. Date two state was also either up or down. Date three state was either up or down. But let's generalize a little bit by assuming that at each date, the economic state can take can be one of the n possible states. Okay, one being the best possible economic state and n being the worst possible economic state. So it's not just up or down. Now the economy is represented not by the binomial tree, but a tree that has n branches every period. Let's also assume this stationary environment. So the probabilities. Uh, characterized by given by this n by n matrix, Markov matrix or transition matrix, probability matrix, which has n components. Probabilities are given to the model, they are exogenous, and then numbered. Endowment can take any possible values, y1 being the largest possible endowment and yn being the lowest possible endowment. And you know, in such an environment, as you can easily imagine, we don't even have to repeat the whole process, starting with the formulation of the UTT maximization problem, deriving the first order conditions, applying the 
demand equals supply, market clearing conditions, and getting the all the state prices and one period ahead state prices, we don't have to repeat that process. We can easily guess that in such an environment, again, the stationary environment, in which there are any possible states every period, the equilibrium state prices, one period ahead state prices, are given by the n by n matrix. So again, one period ahead state prices depend, depend on what state the current economy is. And next state state. Okay, and the formulas will be beta times pi one one, beta times pi one one, y one over y one to the power minus gamma, beta pi one two, y two over y one to the power minus gamma, dot dot dot, beta times pi one n, y n over y one to the power minus gamma, and if the current state is 2, then the 1 period ahead state prices are given by beta times pi 1, 2, y2, uh, uh, sorry, y1 over y2 to the power minus gamma. If the current state is n, state n, then 1 period ahead state prices are given by beta times pi n1, y1, yn to the power minus gamma up to beta pi n n y n over y n to the power minus gamma. Okay, remember, economic model is about to derive endogenous variables given the exogenous model parameters, exogenous environment. In this model, probabilities are given, endowment is given, and the purpose is to get the equilibrium prices. And the equilibrium prices are affected by people's preference, such as beta and gamma, probabilities, and then damage. And once we have one period ahead state prices, we can get all kinds of state prices and we can price any asset.